TV fam, how's it going? Hope you guys are doing awesome today. I got a really, really, really good one coming up. This is Shabir Ali, and he's having a conversation with Douglas Jacoby. So they're gonna be talking about which religion is the most ethical, Islam or Christianity. To ask the second question to Shabir, can you simply name one prophecy of Muhammad in the New Testament? Just name the book chapter. Uh, you're asking if the New Testament yes. prophesies the coming of, of, of the Prophet Muhammad? Um, I don't have a direct reference that there is a particular verse that says that Muhammad is coming, but there are passages in the New Testament which Muslims see as references uh, to the Prophet Muhammad, though in a form now which makes it difficult for Christians to recognize these as a, as a reference. But we would cite John uh, chapter 16, verse 7, for example. John 16, 7 or 14, but they've been, they've been changed. May I ask one more question to Shabir? Okay. Um, it seems okay when the Sudanese, when the British school teacher had her class named the teddy bear Mohammed, you know what happened. I mean, she was a big, if she had named him Ibrahim or Issa, I think it would have been a different story. Why is it that Muslims reject idolatry but seem to idolize Muhammad, calling him savior of the world, lord of the universe, sinless? I get the feeling if we insulted Allah, that would be bad, but to insult Muhammad would be greater, which seems an inversion of the principle against idolatry in Muslim religion. Okay. At this time, what I'd like to do is invite Shabir Ali to cross-examine both or one of his opponents for five minutes. This looks like it would be a very good debate to have attended or at least see the whole thing. Doug, I'll have to answer your question uh, later on during the rebuttal phase or something like that. But uh, uh, boy, do I have some questions for you. <laughs> okay, well, you know, keeping it friendly, uh, you refer to chapter 4, verse 34 of the Quran, which Muslims commonly have interpreted as a reference to uh, the permission for men to beat their wives. Uh, but I don't know if you've studied the Arabic of that text yourself, have you? Of course not. Okay. Uh, recently on, on my, our television broadcast, I've um, had occasion to explain numerous times. And I also uh, wrote a paper which I presented before two of my university profs at U of T, who are specialists in Islamic studies at, uh, in, in the Department of Near and Middle East Civilizations. And it's been greeted with approval. Uh, the paper basically argues that uh, this verse, though commonly interpreted as meaning that a man could beat his wife, has been entirely misinterpreted altogether. The verse taken in its context within the Quranic uh, chapter in which it occurs, actually it's a verse dealing with uh, the penalty for adultery to be administered by state authorities. This particular verse deals with administering it to women, and there are other verses which deal with administering it to men. Uh, well, I guess the, I, I just made a follow-up from, from that. That's, uh, the, uh, um, uh, my, my, my question and the follow-up is done. Um, to continue then, uh, my, my, my statement about that verse very simply is that that verse is not about beating wives. So your objection to the Quran fails on that account, I, I believe. Um, in, in terms of uh, violence, you are aware, of course, that uh, in the New Testament there are numerous references to uh, the approval of violence, even though it is quite clear uh, that uh, the early Christians uh, lived in an environment where they could not have state power and political rule, and so they could not do the kinds of things that people in military rule do. But uh, what do you make of the statement of Jesus where he compares himself to a king who will return and say, bring my enemies here and slay them before me? That, that, is a, that Matthew 22 is a prophecy of the destruction of Jerusalem 40 years later, not by Jesus or Christians, but by pagan Roman armies. Jesus uh, said we can't use violence. I wasn't referring to Matthew 22, I was referring to Luke chapter 19, verse 21, okay. where Jesus that works compares too. himself to the king who would do this? Uh, that the, Jesus has executive authority and in the judgment day that is how he will act. But that's so you're not saying that the religion as part of the... Is my the five world. minute up? No. That was only two. Anyway. Still got some time. <laughs> <laughs> my watch is showing two and some, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, 
so then you're, you're accepting that one who has executive authority, whether God himself or one acting on God's authority, can actually inflict great violence on people, beheading no. them, slaying them. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I'm saying at the judgment day, that's a different issue. I mean, even the Muslims say Jesus is coming back and this is the beginning of the, the judgment. So this is not part of our earthly life. So I, I, no human has the, the right to do that. The New Testament does not approve of violence. Okay. Now, the New Testament, of course, as you rightly said, uh, builds on the old and it accepts the validity of the old, at least in its moral teachings, though not in the particulars about the prescriptive law. Uh, Depends how you define moral. I would give a qualified yes. Would you say that something that God does and reported in the Old Testament would be immoral? No, but things change. There's a principle of abrogation within Judaism just as there is within Islam. But if something is uh, morally wrong, God wouldn't do it at any time. Hmm. Uh, you're, are you talking about God or are you talking about people? I'm talking about God. Okay, well, no. God is still the judge, the final judge in both the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Testament. Is it morally wrong for God to instruct one of his uh, prophets or, or righteous or holy men in this life to slay the enemies? Today it is, yes. Jesus said that that is But no at one time it wasn't. That's correct. So the moral nature of God changes, according to you. That's not the moral nature. It's what God permits us to do. I'll leave it at that. There's a difference. Thank you very much. Okay, well... I mean, this is a pretty typical debate stance where Muslims and Christians, they try to look and see, okay, look what your book says to do this. Look, look what it says. It says, do this, attack people, kill them, beat them, whatever. Don't be friends with them and all of that. And it, it's like so much time is spent saying, okay, well, look, look in your book. It's saying to do so many bad things. And it's like, oh, how could you say that about mine? Look in your book, it's even worse. And that's where the conversations go. Okay, well, you're kind of going to remain arguing in circles if we, if we go like that. Bottom line is, hey, do you want to get hurt? Yes or no? Most people are going to say no. Some people love getting hurt. Okay. So I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm, a kind, I'm gonna show kindness to you and whatnot. And in all ways necessary, I'm gonna do my best to be kind and avoid hurting you. Done, okay. But I think passages in the Bible and the Quran have been taken by people and say, well, look, see, this gives me the authority to not go and harm somebody. And then it gives a whole bad rap for the entire religion. Because there's other people saying, no, 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 our religion doesn't actually teach us to do that. It doesn't teach us to be violent. As this Christian was saying, um, Christianity doesn't permit violence like that. Although, yes, Christian people and Christian powers have been very violent. And I'm sure uh, Shabir Ali's stance is that Islam doesn't promote violence towards people. But Muslims have taken the name of Islam and done some very violent things to people. So end of the day, who's right, who's more ethical, who's more moral? I guess it really just depends. You know, from my studying of Christianity and Islam, the fundamental moralities are pretty much there still. You know, not lying, not stealing, don't go out and commit murder, you know, worshiping God only, uh, being kind to people, upholding your oaths and promises, honoring your parents, all of that. Um, th th there's so many commonalities and similarities in terms of morality when you look at Christianity and Islam. So to say Christianity is more moral than Islam or Islam is more moral than Christianity, I think that's just going to be subjective and that's going to be preference. I know Muslims will say, yes, our religion is the most moral. Christians will say, yes, our religion is the most moral. But Who's right in this case? Ultimately though, people say, hey, let God be the judge. Okay, well, how does God execute judgment? Does he order people to pass judgment on his behalf? Or does God come down and do it himself in some supernatural way? You know, that's another question there. And if God is gonna be ordering people to uh, execute judgment in terms of being the final judge of things and the judge of human life, then could somebody also then spin that and say, hey, God has given me the, the right to do this and then go do it in the name of God. You know, that opens up whole 
different can of worms. But guys, let me know your thoughts about this. Sound off down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think, what you feel about this. And again, thanks for hanging out with me in another video. Really love talking to you guys about topics like this. I learned so much and uh, I really know you guys are learning with me as well. So again, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you guys in the next episode where I look at another topic relating to religion and spirituality. See you soon. Later.